Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Duo Group Iron Man. Last video, I wanted to train agility with the goal being to get to level 93. So we did the Priftinos course, we did the Arty course, we did Sepulcher for the first time on this account, and we got the full Black Graceful. But you can see I stopped before getting level 93 agility, and that is because of an update that came into the game today, as I'm recording this at least. I know the videos are probably at least a couple weeks behind. This kind of took me as a surprise because I didn't know it was coming out right away. Like they mentioned it a week or two ago, and I didn't realize that it was like for sure going to happen, much less it was going to happen this soon. But here it is, the Group Boss Bash Raffle. It's a two-week competition for Group Iron Man only, which begins today as I'm recording this. And the goal is to get as many raffle tickets as possible. This list right here is all the bosses you can get raffle tickets from. And I think you just get the tickets like guaranteed after each kill that you do for the boss. Certain activities give the raffle tickets for everyone who's participating, at least the Group Iron Man, since it's a Group Iron Man only competition. So all the Group Iron Man at Temporos will get tickets. Um, because it's not considered like single player for the raffle. But if you go with your group to like Seracnus, for example, only the person who gets the kill will get the ticket. That's what the Y stands for. The tickets have no in-game value. You can't trade them to other players. And at the end of the two weeks, there's gonna be 10 groups that will be picked from the raffle. And because it's the raffle, that means the more tickets you have, the higher chance you have that you're gonna win. Each of those 10 groups will be given one year of membership, but one of those groups will be given lifetime membership. This kind of reminds me of UIM Bingo, where like when any clan or Discord server does a bingo, it, it's seems like kind of similar vibes to that. Before we get into this though, I do have a few things I want to mention that do seem kind of weird about this. The first thing is that if you have a bigger size team, then you're going to be able to get more tickets. It's not like scaled or divided by amount of players. It just goes by the whole group because like each group is picked for the raffle. So it does right from the start put our two person team at a bit of a disadvantage. Another thing is that this promotes masses over like solo or small groups. Like for example, why would you do like duo winter toad for example? when you're only gonna get one or two points per hour versus you could just mass it and get like 10 or 12 or more uh, KC at Toad per hour. Another thing is that there doesn't seem to be anything against leeching. Like if someone just wants to buy um, like the Barb Assault wins from one of those BA leeching clans, then you could just do that and there's nothing to stop you. Or same thing with Chambers of Zarek. All you would have to do is just kill one scav to get loot and you could just like leech and just AFK the whole raid and get 10 tickets from it. But you probably wouldn't want to do that because the waiting is really weird for a lot of these things. Like for example, if you're doing raids somewhat efficiently, you'd get two done per hour, which would be 20 tickets per hour. And I know this is kind of like a, a loser thing to just like worry about like the points per hour, the tickets per hour. But why would you do raids and get 20 points per hour when you could instead be doing God Wars and getting like 100 points per hour if you're doing like Sarah or something? I don't know how many group Iron Men are actually going to have the mindset of like points per hour. But if that is the case, then they're probably just going to camp like the most efficient thing for two weeks straight. But I don't know how serious people are going to be about this. With all that said though, I am still very excited to try this out and see how this goes. And it's like a once in a lifetime thing. How often does Jagex do competitions like this? Especially for something that I'm able to compete in. Like I can't play dead man, bro. I can't PK. Now we actually have to like sign up or something for the raffle. So there's an option right here. Raffle. Okay. Join. Spook said she's like waiting at Winter Toad right now for me to join. I didn't realize she was like right there. Okay. So join. And now we can't add or remove players from the group. Oh dang. I guess we can't do it then. I was going to kick Spook. <laughs> And then we also can't rename the group. Okay, participate in the raffle. And there we go. We can now track the progress from the group settings. Let's see what that looks like. Just go here, score. Oh, cool. Okay, I wonder if there's gonna be like physical tickets. Well, not like literally physical, but like tickets that will be in your inventory or if it's just like a counter that goes up. We'll, we'll find out. Now that I have that intro for the competition out of the way, that's probably what we're going to be working on over the course of the next couple or next few videos. Where to begin though? Well, we're going to be starting off with Slayer and very conveniently the last task I had, I stopped right when I got 98 Slayer, uh, and the last task I had was Dagnoth. So as you can see, we are going to DKs. Here's my gear and inventory setup. Don't judge the ring. I like the defense and the prayer bonus, okay? So with DKs, they each give one ticket each for the competition. And then here's what my collection log looks like. We don't have any B rings for the team. I actually got the Rex pet before getting the B ring. And then you can see each of the KCs up here. I wasn't even able to solo DKs before because last time we went, we had way lower stats. So we had to go together. But now that the stats are higher and the gear is better, there's shouldn't be too much stress with like the timing with the rotations and stuff. Ooh, they're off tick, which means I can do this thing. 
See, I've, I've got some experience with DKs, as long as Rex doesn't come up to me, please. No. <laughs> okay, we're going back up. Oh yeah, unfortunately we don't have the noted bones yet at DKs. I don't have the Fremnic Elite Diary done, so I'm just going to have to bury them as I go. Oh wow, so each time I kill one of them, there's like a message in the chat box. I'm going to guess there's probably a way to toggle it, but it's also very satisfying to like see the number go up. That's what I love about RuneScape, I love seeing them go up. Another issue, I can't drop these items right now because my uh, my notification, my warning notification for dropping items is, is low and there's like a message but I can't click through the message because I have all these spin ellipse and stuff attacking me, so that's a bit annoying. We got a Dragon Axe. And I so wish we had SGS for DKs, that would be so nice. We'll go to Sarah someday. We got a Sarah's Ring, but we had that already. I ended up running out of Antidote with like 30 kills left on the task and let me tell you, it is very difficult upkeeping your health at DKs when you're taking like 6 damage every 15 seconds. But I did manage to make it through with a lot of blood barrages and this will be the last kill of the task any second. If I did have antidote, I would have tried to stay a little bit after the task. From this task, I've made it up to 121 tickets. We got the dupe Sears ring, uh, another dragon axe, and then a bunch of U-logs will be really nice for the birdhouse runs. Man, I'm skipping all these tasks that I would normally really want to do, but because you don't get tickets for them, I'm just skipping them and hoping I can get a task that I can get tickets for. This is my first time seeing one of these, the Ensouled Heckhound Heckhound. Heads. They actually, that looks pretty like brutal looking at that. I guess all the insult heads are like that. I've kind of figured out that actively going for slayer tasks might not be the best way to go for tickets because there's not that many slayer tasks that actually give the tickets. So instead, probably what I'll be doing is just in my downtime, I'll just AFK slayer until I get a task that I can get tickets from. And then while we're actively playing the game, we'll just do stuff that actually does give tickets, I guess. I figure this is probably a good excuse to go back to bandos. And right now I noticed that I'm almost out of sharks. So I'm just cooking some of the raw sharks I have. I think I got all these raw sharks from Kraken for the most part. I have almost 3,000 of them and I don't think I've even fished any sharks of my own. I, I definitely haven't done minnows on this account yet. Right now I'm just waiting for Spook to get ready and I was thinking about my gear setups and stuff and I realized Last time we went to Bandos, I was using the Hosta, which I don't have anymore because I made that into a land. The Hosta had defense bonuses and it had like decent offense bonuses, but I need a new weapon to use. And I think the best choice out of what I have is going to be to make a tentacle whip, which I haven't made one of my own yet. So we'll make my first one right here. You cannot undo this. And then the tentacle consumes the whip. The whip does not consume the tentacle. So after we use up all 10,000 charges, then you get the tentacle back, but the whip just disappears. And wait, I think I still had, yeah, I have two left over in the bank. I just remembered I was using the Hosta as my Zami item before, and I do now have a Zami Blessing and a Bandos Blessing, so it doesn't matter which one I use, but I'll be using a combination of a Blessing and then a Book um, for the Bandos and the Zami items that I need. Are you on the right spell book? Oh, I'm not on the right spell book, actually. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about the Bulwark. I'm going to try that instead of the tent and the crystal shield because apparently it's pretty decent as a weapon. It, so it's a five tick weapon and Grardor attacks every six ticks. So as long as I'm tick perfect, I can still get in two hits for every one hit he does. Just a little bit less wiggle room since the whip is a four tick weapon. Yeah. But I really want to try this. <laughs> okay. The only drops we have so far is just the tacits that Spook got and I got nothing from Bandos. And we only have God's Richard 2 so far. Okay, let's see how this goes. So. It have to be on pummel, and then tick perfect. Nice, dude. This thing actually is smacking. Oh my <laughs> god. Am I gonna get the first? Oh my. As the tank, I got the first kill using the freaking. <laughs> oh yeah. So each of these bandos kills also counts for five raffle tickets too. So that's pretty sweet. The bulwark has a passive effect depending on which attack style you're on, but we're just gonna focus on the pummel style for now. And with Pummel on, it increases your strength bonus based on the average of your four defense styles. I know this formula may look complicated and small because it barely fits on the screen, but basically whatever armor has the highest combined defense stats is what you want to wear to get the maximum strength bonus out of the bulwark. 16 kill trip, first trip back. Ooh, what am I? I got a sapphire. I have to go, I have to bank a shark. I'll be back. Oh my god, yes! Our second cassettes! <laughs> oh my god, yes! Congrats! Oh. Hey, it's new for my collection log now, so uh, we're, we're kind of matching for Bandos. We're twinsies. Oh, that's so sick. Hell yeah. Well, I'll put them on. I don't know if it's actually going to be better for me to wear those for Bandos. 
because of like how the the bulwark scales with defense i think it has more range defense but less melee defense than uh, the tank legs oh i saw the pop-up i got a uh, 50kc i'm a grardor adept let's grab our chips and dip on out of here then well that was an unexpectedly successful uh half a day at bandos i'll show you the stats if you want compared to the tank legs versus the tacits you can see the melee defenses are just less and then Okay, that's like slightly more range defense, but then you get the strength bonus and the prayer bonus, which the tank legs do not have. And then the negatives is slightly less negative range accuracy. So yeah, they're both good for their own places. For now though, I'm gonna get back to AF King Slayer and hope for uh, maybe like Black Dragon's task or a Greater Demon task for Xami would be nice. Also, I'm gonna buy more bank space. I know there's a lot of items I could clear out, but I also have a lot of GP, so I can afford the two mil to get 40 more slots. Let's do it. Yes, two mil, goodbye. Hello, bank space. I've never used an amulet of blood fury before and I would kind of like to get one. So to get a blood shard, we have to get them from the Vire Watch Sentinels, which is a vampire task. So I'm just gonna go ahead and unlock that as a slayer task for 80 points. Oh, ooh, greater demons. Ooh, that means Zami. Okay, later today or tomorrow, uh, me and Spook will go to Zami then. But for now, I'm just gonna do a little bit of agility because I do still want to get 93. There's not too much going on tonight. Spook's busy editing and I'm not gonna be soloing Xami, so figure I should probably come over here try my luck with CG because currently your corrupt gauntlet kill count is one. Can we get to two CG KC tonight? Let's find out. Yes! Oh yes! First try Fridays! What's this? 3, 2, 1 mage. Yay! Your corrupt gauntlet kill count is two. Ooh, crystal weapon seed. New for the collection log. It's not the, the special one, but it's yeah. Oh, dude, these kills are all just cutting it so close. Whew, okay, I think I think I'm uh, I'm done with CG for tonight. I'm stuck in this conundrum of it would be nice to have decks so I could have rigor to do CG, but then it's also nice to do CG so I could have both up for raids. Kind of similar to that circle of I don't have a job because I don't have experience because I don't have a job because I don't have experience, and the cycle goes on and on. <gasps> oh my god, dude. <laughs> I just woke up, I was editing a video, I look over, and there's a little squirrel following me! Oh, 6.4 mil XP. Oh, Spook's asleep right now, and I was just doing some laps before she wakes up and we go do whatever for the day. I can't believe it. <laughs> well, I guess now when I go back to Sepulchre, I'm kind of obligated to go for the Dark Acorn for the 3,000 hollowed marks, so... That's gonna be a thing I'll end up doing. I'm actually not gonna insure the pet because there is an update that's supposed to be coming to the game where it gives like all pets automatic insurance. You still have to pay to get them back, but you won't have to worry about insuring pets anymore. So I'm gonna save my GP. It's kind of been a while since I got a pet. So just for reference, that is pet number four. And I believe this is actually the order I got my pets into. Please hit, please. <laughs> Oh, Corrupt Gauntlet Veteran. Oh, wow. Veteran at 5kc. That's crazy. <laughs> well, as you know, I have a bit of a problem with hoarding clues from roll caskets. And for the last video, or maybe two videos, I've forgotten to open them. Or maybe I just chose not to open them. But we do have some clues to open here. So let's start with the beginners. See if we can get any new uniques. Uh, it's not new, unfortunately. A couple of easy clues to open. And then mediums. Any ranger boots in here? We have 13 in total to open. I think I'm currently 3 out of 4 for the Zami pages. And the Cryer hat was new as well. And please. Oh, nice! 2 in 1. Penguin mask and armadillo stole. Penguins are my favorite animal too, so that's like extra cool. Uh, nice. Two more uniques. Oh, climbing boots G. That's, uh, <laughs> that's fashion scape. And there we go. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh yeah, I forgot to drop the master. I honestly don't really care about masters at this stage because the odds of me actually completing one at this stage are so low and I spend so much time doing masters and I almost always end up dropping them anyway, so I don't really care that much. Oh, speaking of masters. Ooh, Dragon K, nice, an elite unique. That's pretty rare to get. Um, oh, well, we don't have a dragon pick, so <laughs> that one's getting dropped. One more elite. And we got eight hard clues to open. Oh, that might have just completed the Zami book. Another unique armadillo plate skirt. Five more hard clues to open. I'm hoping for a blessed dehyde body because we don't have any yet. And last one. 
Okay, nice, so I did in fact end up finishing the Zami book. So let's claim that back. We'll add all four pages into there and we now have the Unholy books. I'll just go ahead and show you the stats. This is actually a really good book to get completed because it has these attack accuracy bonuses and of course the five prayer bonus. But today is Friday, which means it is time to party. And by party, I mean stream and maybe end up doing some raids at some point if some people are free. So I'm just saying, don't be surprised if you see some raids clips or raids loots or something in a bit. We got two more clues to open here. Wow. For each raid, uh, it's 10 raffle tickets. Not really efficient points considering I probably end up doing like one to two raids per hour. So it's like 10 to 20 points per hour compared to doing like God Wars or something where we get well over 50, maybe close to 100 points per hour. But I want to do raids anyways. It's been a while since I've done Barrows. I have a few upgrades since the last time. We have the Ferocious Gloves. The Tacit, the Rod is Blessing upgrade, the Ring. Oh, I got imbued Heart too, so that'll be nice. Oh, the Face Guard as well as new. Let's try our luck tonight. What am I doing? I totally forgot about the Strange Old Lockpicks. Let's grab out one of these. Got six of them. My first time ever using a Strange Old Lockpick on any account. We just use it on the door. Oh, that's so cool. There's only one door you can normally go through. I guess that one, but I can skip running around the whole entire Barrow's Crypt. There's two doors but it shouldn't use up a second charge going through here. 49 and then 49, nice. Oh, we got elite. And we got the casket. Typical. Oh, dude, I, oh, I saw the helm. Oh, the Guthans helm is the last piece we need to finish Guthans, which is like the main reason why I wanna do Barrows. Oh, the helm baited me so hard. Not even new for the collection log. Oh, we got elite and we got the casket. Oh, nice. New collection log slot. Very nice. That was 700 KC at Barrows. Another elite. And here's the casket. And we have level 92 agility, which means I can now access the last floor, floor five of Sepulchre. So I can finally go for complete runs whenever I decide to go back, which isn't gonna be today. And it's also probably not gonna be in this video, but whenever I do decide to go. Oh, Aram's top. Uh. No, thank you. Good death's coffer value at number four for me. That is an elite clue. And the casket. Varix Brassard, wow. Not new for the log. Okay. Oh, oh, dear Ox Plate Body. Uh, that is not new. Oh, wait, no, it is new. Yes, nice. New collection log slot. Wait, is that. I don't know how many dear Ox pieces I had before. Let's see if we. If we. Did we finish the set, please? Oh, oh, we finished the set! Yes, we finished Dirox. Oh, it's so sick. That's actually really good. I mean, it wasn't the main item, main thing that I want to get done. I want to finish Guthans, but Dirox is still really good too. Use that for Giant Mole or for some of the combat achievement stuff. It's always a tough decision going to Mole, whether I should use Dirox or use the Mole Hunter Lance. Dancing for good luck. Oh, <laughs> we got a Guthans piece. Not the piece we were hoping for. Spook already had the Guthans plate body. I didn't have it in my collection log before, so now at least I have it for my collection log, but it's just the helm that we still need. Let's take a look at this log though. Only two pieces are missing for full Barrow's log completion at 734KC. Well, it's been a fun last few days of just playing the game, doing a bunch of random stuff. And I know a lot of the things I was doing wasn't even like uh, for tickets for the group boss bash raffle, but it's not a big deal. Like I'm just playing the game and having fun. I do still have that greater demons task though. So next video, we're probably gonna end up going back to Zami and going for a second Hosta. And then if we do get Hosta, maybe take that to Seracnus or something. Cause I haven't done that yet on this account. And yeah, I don't know. I'm just having a lot of fun playing the account and I hope you're enjoying watching as well. But with that said, make sure you check out my duo teammate Spook Dogs channel, which you can find the link to in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope that you have a great day, and I will see you again next time.